Hey everyone, this is Susan with NRSNG. Today we will be working through a care plan on sepsis. To see our massive free database of nursing care plans, just visit nrsng.com slash nursing care plans. You can also download our free editable PDF care plan template that I'm using at nrsng.com backslash care plan template. So let's get started. The first nursing diagnosis that I did for sepsis is ineffective thermoregulation related to systemic inflammatory response, also called SIRS, by the way, as evidenced by thermometer readings. So first of all, I did the sepsis care plan um, as if it's a patient that we were actively caring for right now. Um, because if a patient has sepsis, they are going to be in the hospital. Um, they are going to have a very difficult time with all of their vital signs, really. Um, but th their temperature is going to fluctuate, and that is something that you do need to keep your eye on. The next nursing diagnosis I put is impaired urinary elimination related to shock as evidenced by decreased measured urine output. And for this one, I mean, you're going to have decreased um, fluid volume in general for your whole body. Uh, so you'll be hypotensive. Uh, the patient is going to have decreased tissue perfusion. They won't be, kidneys are not the um, most important organ. So our body at this rate will be shunting blood to the more important organs, the heart, the lungs, the brain. So with a decreased amount of um, blood flow to the kidneys, you're going to have a decreased amount of urine. So it's important that we keep that. If we can measure the urine, it'll help us to measure if they're doing well or not. And for a third nursing diagnosis, I actually did a couple of them, but they're all uh, risk fours. Um, risk four electrolyte imbalance, huge. You're going to want to watch all of their electrolytes, especially with a fluid imbalance. You're going to have the electrolyte imbalance. Then also I wrote that risk for deficient fluid volume. Um, risk for acute confusion. A lot of these patients, like let's say they came in um, with... A urinary tract infection that went septic, a lot of those patients will be uh, very confused. When you have your vital signs so abnormal um, and you have neurological changes, uh, you are going to have an altered mental status um, as a result of that. And then also risk for infection. And I don't mean um, as is sep sepsis itself isn't an infection, um, but your body is already fighting hard enough uh, they're at risk for secondary infections, other infections getting it worse. For example, we're throwing a bunch of antibiotics at them. Um, they're at risk for C. diff. So for the patient's goals, the first goal I put is infection control and prevention because this is really, really important. We don't want to spread whatever it is they have to anybody else, but more importantly, we don't want to give them anything else to have to fight with. Um, so this means that, and I put get blood cultures first because it's always important to get blood cultures before you start antibiotics, but administer the antibiotics, perform hand hygiene very well, and then educate your patient and their family on infection prevention. So this means, um, things like making sure they all wash their hands, um, after touching the patient, before touching the patient, um, when they leave the room, things like that not coughing on the patient. So yes, we are going to implement this and we'll evaluate it because there will be improvement in the patient's conditions. The vital signs, lab work will reflect this as well so there won't be any new infections. For my second patient goal, I put fluid resuscitation. This is super important. You are going to be giving these patients lots and lots of fluids. A lot of people uh, who have sepsis may have already had like kidney failure or they may be the kind of patient who um, didn't already have their body working all that great. And so some people can be hesitant. Like let's say they have CHF. You don't want to flood your patient with fluids if they have CHF. 
Um, so they might be hesitant. But if you think about it this way, your body in sepsis is actually shutting down. So you want to give it fluids so that you have volume so that all of your blood can reach and perfuse all of the areas that it can. Um, if it overloads your kidneys, let's say, that's one organ failure versus multiple organ failures, which is much easier to fix um, having one organ fail versus multiple organs fail. So yes, you want a fluid resuscitate. Um, this will be done by administering fluids as prescribed, and it all is weight-based. It really depends, and it depends on the the doctor and the patient in particular, the hospital's protocols, um, and evidence-based research, which does change. So you want to monitor the I's and O's. Every ounce of fluid that you put in that patient, every milliliter gets counted, and every milliliter that comes out gets counted as well. Monitor those vital signs really closely. Um, this is going to help you like with all of your I's and O's issues. So let's say um, you want to know if the patient is still dehydrated. Well, they'll, they'll probably be hypotensive. They'll probably be tachycardic if they're still too fluid deficient or hypovolemic. Um, so you, they'll use your vital signs to help you figure out if you're starting to resuscitate them well enough. Yes, we are going to implement this. And for our evaluation, like the blood pressure will stay within normal limits, the patient's uh, tissues will be staying perfused. So for a septic patient, you want to check, is their capillary refill within three seconds? Is it going all the way to their fingertips and back? Um, and because the perfusion is decreased in septic patients, we want to be checking their skin over and making sure that they don't get bed sores or that they aren't laying in one position for too long or having a cord on their back. Simple things, we just need to make sure we take care of that skin. For the third uh, patient goal, I put temperature control. Um, this is... You, you want to assess and monitor the temperature. You want to administer Tylenol and Motrin as needed. And the reason why this is so important is because if the patient becomes too febrile, they can have a, um, you know, well, it cooks their insides, basically. And they can have a febrile seizure as an adult um, if it ends up being too much. Um I think it's over 105 that we really start to be super concerned. You want to instantly um, work on cooling them down, giving them cool fluids, putting ice packs in their groins, things like that. Um, if they are too cold, that can also be a problem. So monitoring that temperature, finding out if they're hypothermic. If they are, we're going to apply bear hugger, warm blankets, give um, the ranger a little go. So warm up your fluids. Yes, we are going to implement this. And for our evaluation, the patient's temper will be within normal limits and the vital signs will stay regular as well. Um, just to, you know, help when you, when you have a fever, your heart is tachycardic. If we're giving fluids, if we're making sure that temperature is under control, our heart's probably going to be in a more normal um, beat for you. So I hope that helps you guys out with sepsis. It's a large topic, um, and there are many things that you can do for this topic. But uh, patients that have sepsis, it's there's a lot of details involved. Visit nrsng.com slash nursing care plans for our huge free care plan database and nrsng.com slash care plan template for our editable care plan template PDF. This has been another episode of the NRSNG podcast. Thank you for joining us, and thanks for being a part of the NRSNG family. Now, go out and be your best self today.